All right, the time being 701, I'll call the April 27, 2021 uh, meeting of the Oxford Board of Selectmen to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which is General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order concerning imposition on strict limitations on the number of people they may gather in one place. Meetings in the town of Oxford are being conducted by remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. And I will start with attendance. Uh, Selectman Triano. Present. Selectman LeBlanc. Present. Selectman Daniels. Present. Selectman Sad is not with us this evening, and I am Selectman Lamash. So there are four of us. We have a quorum. We will go on with our agenda. The first item is a cannabis uh, cultivation approval and execution. So I'll turn that over to our town manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm having trouble with my video piece, so I'm going to shoot from the hip here. Um, I wanted to place before the board something that is timely. Uh, we have a Bay State's very own um, LLC, which is a business that approached the town about opening the town's, um, uh, potentially opening the town's first cultivation uh, center for marijuana. Uh, we have done a retail host agreement and we have done a medicinal, but we have not done a cultivation. So it's a little bit different. Um, we had the owner, um, Ken Lucas, come before the board on two occasions. Uh, we've gone through what I would consider to be the normal vetting process. And um, now we are at the phase where uh, we're placing before the board consideration of a host agreement. Um, this is uh, in going to be a 7,000 plus square foot cultivation center that basically is up in our commercial industrial zone um, that has been uh, relegated uh, or designated for marijuana uh, businesses. Um, so having said that, I know you've seen the entire presentation. What's contained in this host agreement are all of the things that I think we had gotten uh, feedback from and a couple things that are there, but in a different form. And that is mostly because of the request of uh, the actual uh, owner of the business, uh, but we had uh, legal counsel very uh, much vested in the process uh, to make sure um, this business will have uh, the items that it had suggested uh, to this board that it was willing to have. The first item, which always is very important to a community, has to do with the community impact fee, which um, for gross sales will be um, set at 3% for each year. Um, this is a five-year agreement unless the state changes its rules. Um, and having said that, um, because it's a cultivation center, it is a little bit different. This is not something that really came up in the presentations, but it's something both myself and um, our attorney thought was important. And that is if the cultivation center uh, business decides to open up a retail business and supply product, meaning marijuana, to sell at their business, that we would still capture that within our 3% impact fee, um, as much as 50% uh, of the retail price that it would be if they were selling to an entity that wasn't owned by them uh, for retail purposes. Um, the other piece of it that's new in this um, host agreement is um, the fact that besides a community impact fee, I'm going to um, have contained in this, if the board approves it, an actual annual community benefit payment. Now, annual community benefit payments are different. Um, it's something where um, when you're looking at it from the perspective of a host agreement, it's something that the, the owner is willing to do that will somehow benefit the community. Um, the owner and I had a lot of conversations about specific types of programs in town, particularly the community center, some others, um, so this uh, is being set at an uh, amount equal to on an annual basis, $35,000 in addition to the 3% community impact fee. Um, so I was really pleased that the owner was willing to do that. Um, the other piece of it uh, was very important to some selectmen, obviously it's a cultivation center 
and we want to make sure that the town reserves its rights, um, especially with feedback from a residents that the owner um, will be able to not only report to the board, but with a certain number of um, residential um, inquiries or complaints or concerns would actually address a problem. And we have that contained in there. Uh, the other pieces of it uh, that we have contained in a different way, uh, the owner uh, had done a presentation about uh, wanting to do community um, charitable items as well. Um, and uh, that included scholarships, not to exceed $10,000 a year um, in 0.5% um, that they had in there. Uh, the one of the things that we, one of the reasons why it took a, bit, a little bit longer, we had our legal counsel and the owner had differences of opinion about what gets put into a host agreement. Uh, and the owner is very willing to outline the things that he did in the presentation, especially with regards to diversity in hiring and employment of those who would work at the facility, um, looking uh, to be an equal opportunity employer um, in terms of charitable benefits, looking to say that they will do um, some charitable work in town, uh, but they wanted to only put that initially in their um, application to the CCC, which is different um, and not something our legal counsel has seen. So we went back and forth on that a number of times. I reduced some of the language um, to be amenable to the um, business owner. And, um, and at the end of the day, uh, they felt comfortable with um, some of the verbiage that we took out, but knowing that they're gonna put it completely into their um, CCC application. So I think those are pretty big pieces of it. The other piece was hours of operation. They actually wanted to go from six o'clock in the morning to something like 12 midnight. Um, I asked to um, have that scaled back, knowing that um, you, know, you may have workers coming and going at a facility that has um, high security on the inside and somewhat on the outside, but I thought um, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, which is pretty standard and sometimes even less um, hours of operation for some facilities. Um, but knowing there's not um, a ton of residents right nearby, um, I still thought it was important because it's kind of out of the way um, that we have some hours of operation where we know our police have um, you know, a strong enough force um, to make sure uh, and ensure security. Um, so there are a lot of provisions in here. I hope you got an opportunity to see from odor control technology, waste uh, water and waste controls, water consumption, electric usage and renewable energy requirements, uh, trying to keep air quality um, at a premium and keep air from inside the facility um, not escaping um, as much as possible. Um, and you know, pretty much that those are the kind of things that I think make it a, a very good uh, host agreement. I'm, I'm pleased with it. I think it has some new things and it also has some things that other communities um, would express to our community in hindsight they wish they had done in their host agreements. So having said that, you have it before you, I hope, um, and I strongly recommend that the board um, consider uh, approving that host agreement this evening. Thank you, uh, town manager. I'll uh, entertain a motion that the board approve that host agreement. I would make a motion that the board approve the host community agreement with BVO LLC. Second. Uh, motion to approve and a second. Any comments? Uh, Mr. Oh, yes. go ahead. So, select me trying. I'll go right ahead. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Um, I just wanted to say to uh, town manager, thank you for making this a priority and bringing the new business into town. Um, you can tell that you put a lot of work into it and it seems very well done. So I just wanted to say thank you for prioritizing it. Cheryl. Yes, uh, Jen, um, if I can, I just wanted to clarify. So mm -hmm. in it, um, is the $35,000 fee, is that a one-time like initial startup fee or is that to be expected every year? That's, that is an annual contribution every year. It's considered an annual benefit, community benefit payment. Um, yep. And that, that would be on an annual basis in addition to the 3%. See the 3% typically um, in the Cannabis Commission is looking at community impact fees more um, closely about the actual costs related 
um, to the business that impact the community. So doing that business has a certain cost to it, whether it's increased presence of police, whether it's increased traffic on the roads, increased um, potential drug um, use by uh, people that might require increased uh, education and training and counseling. So they look for specific ways that, and we're gonna have to keep track of that going forward. It's in, in the more precise ways, it sounds like from the CCC, although there is a case pending you know, in the Supreme um, Judicial Court that argues you know, for and against how much the CCC can regulate and ask a town to do, but it looks like it's going in that direction, which is one of the reasons I was a little bit, you know, making sure that some of those things that we take into consideration, whereas an annual community benefit payment is different. It's not a community impact fee related to the cost of doing the business. This is a, an agreement by the owner to actually contribute um, for a benefit to the community, uh, however we spell that out, um, you know, on an annual basis of $35,000 a year. So it's in addition. So would that be something that would go to free cash, Jen, or would that go to offset expenses? Um, it, it, initially, any payment that comes to the town would actually um, get designated um, into the general fund and then get reappropriated how we, um, you know, would consider it. How we get it set up, I haven't really talked to um, our finance director about how we would do that. But you know, initially my thoughts are it would come, you know, in. But with the understanding that we would want to reallocate it, not not so dissimilar to other kinds of um, agreements that that the town makes and uh, has specific items. Now we did not specify the exact uh, community benefits that we would want to put it towards. We have some ideas, you know, but at the end of the day, um, all of that would have to get reappropriated. Got it. And I would, I would assume that. Um, I mean, I remember when we did cure relief, like it took it took a while for them to kind of get ramped up, and then start. You know, I mean, I think it took them. Um, I want to say, I want to say it took it took them almost a year to kind of get fully ramped up, built out. Those, are we looking at kind of the same thing on this one too, Jen? It, it sounds to me like the owner is really, he's got most of his application already done, which is one of the reasons we wanted to try to get this um, inked as uh, soon as possible because they need that to actually um, complete the application process. Uh, how long it takes them will be, I think, I'm getting indications that they want to be able to, to do this as quickly as possible. Having said that, there may be, you know, they're, they're in dialogue constantly. Um, the owner is in particular with um, those who were supposed to be state of the art in the industry and um, have best practices on how to ramp up a facility as quickly as possible. But they still have to go through permitting processes, go through the planning board, um, in which there could be requirements placed upon them um, before they open um, to meet. And so this thing is an agreement in terms of once they're operational and what would the facility be like uh, once it's going forward. Um, we do have the annual community benefit. I agree to prorate that uh, based on whenever they start that, that year. Um, you know, in previous ones, sometimes we'll ask them to make an, uh, a contribution even before they start. But because this was more important to try to get the community um, benefit payment, I thought was important um, because that has more lasting effect than just, um, you know, putting in waiting two, two more months for a, a first payment once they're operational. Didn't seem like as much of a um, importance to the owner or to, my, to myself and, and legal counsel. So. So uh, as far as how fast, well, I, you know, I think that they will do really their their utmost to get operational as quickly as possible. I do feel that way with this business. But they're not opening tomorrow. Yeah. Huh? They're not opening tomorrow. No, no. I no. Uh, but, but they, but like I said, they they have a real vested interest in wanting to use state of the art technology, um, and I don't doubt that with the owner. He he yeah. said this is you know one of his dream come true. So I think that will be indicated. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right. Any more questions or comments? Not seeing any, then I will call for a vote. 
Yes. 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 And I'll vote yes. That's for an affirmative, one absent. That uh, execution is approved. That host agreement. Great. Uh, next item on our agenda is uh, a request by the school department to um, suggest that all these items that we've received in our list from April 22nd, uh, 26th, I mean, are surplus. So, town manager, do you need to explain anything or? No, I, I they're they're outdated. Um, you know, commu computer mo monitors. Um, they want to be able to surplus them. They're everything from uh, toner uh, to uh, old cameras to printers. Um, they have a pretty good understanding of what's old for them and what's not. And um, I I know that they would be eager to try to surplus it. And if they can recoup any money by putting it out there, um, they will do that and somebody might actually buy them um, and maybe they make a little bit of money. Uh, but I don't know exactly what their intention is. I just know that this is a normal um, thing that you know every so many years um, they go through and uh, the technology becomes more um, obsolete and ill-equipped for the needs of the classroom. All right, thank you. So I'll open it up to the board for a motion. I would make a motion that the board declare the items listed on the attached email from the school department dated April 26, 2021 as surplus. Second. We have a motion and a second to declare that surplus. Any questions or comments? Not seeing any, I'll call for a vote. Yes. 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 And I'll vote yes. For an affirmative, one absent. Those items that uh, we have are surplus. Thank you. Uh, next item is a uh, acceptance of a donation from uh, Laura Wilson to the Senior Center. Um, I would uh, open that up to the board also. I make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean. I was just going to give recognition to Carol White. This is her second donation of like a hundred dollars. I, I give her a lot of credit. She loves uh, the meal program that we're running, and uh, she wrote a little note. I don't know if that was. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's in your. Yes. It, it basically says, you know, whatever expense that they want to, um, you know, help defray uh, plastic containers or whatever related to the meal program. So, we we really thank her for that, and I just wanted the board to know that. Sorry to interrupt. No, no problem. Sorry, I should have went to you first. I stepping out of bounds a little. So we'll go back to Megan, go ahead. I would make a motion that the board accept the donation of $100 from Carol White to the Oxford Senior Center in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A to accept this donation. Second. So we have a motion and a second to accept that. Any comments? Not hearing any, I'll call for a vote. Yes. 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 And I'll vote yes. It's for an affirmative, one absent. We thank Carol very, very much. Very nice. All right. Next item is uh, police, uh, police Week Proclamation. So I have a pro proclamation, a little tongue twisted there. Uh, that I'd like to read in the record. This is going to the uh, Oxford Police, whereas Police Chief Anthony Sad has said, the, the department's members are dedicated to meet the challenges and demands of a changing society. And I am proud to serve with these fine officers. Oxford Police officers are trained in different disciplines, such as community policing, criminal investigations, medical first response, child abuse, traffic control, domestic violence, firearms, canine ZACs, information technology, crime scene processing, evidence gathering and presentation, drone flights, and a host of other areas in addition to a point, uh, performing patrol duties, and whereas these dedicated men and women who have chosen law enforcement as a career 
playing an essential role in preserving the freedom, rights, safety, and security of the citizens of Oxford. And whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, the members of the Oxford Police Department have provided a vital public service facing the threat of violence and danger and routinely putting their lives on the line to defend us. And whereas it is important that all the citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of the members of the Oxford Police Department, and that members of the department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property protecting them against violence and disorder, and protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Oxford, call upon all our citizens in all patriotic, civic, and educational organization, organizations to observe the week of May 9th through the 15th in the year 2021 as National Police Week. And this is given under this day of April uh, 27th, 2021 by the entire board and our town manager. And so with that, I'll open it up to the board. I just wanted to, if I could, Mr. Chair, I'll go right ahead, Selectman Triana. As I always say, I just want to say it again tonight. Thank you to the chief and the police department for everything that you do every day for our town because you definitely make it a better, safer place to live in. And we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Any Chairman. other comments? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, yes, please. I would also like to just echo um, it's, you know, reading through the proclamation, I, I always enjoy seeing the list of everything that encompasses being a police officer and a first responder. Um, it's not just doing traffic stops and writing tickets. Um, just the, the list in that first paragraph that you read just shows um, the amount of training that has to take place, um, the wealth of knowledge that all our professional police officers have. Um, it's difficult times, but you know, time and time again, Oxford Police Department remains extremely professional. Um, and just thank you for everything you guys do. You're welcome. Well, I do see the chief there. Chief, do you have anything? Of course, you've already said a mouthful of that first uh, statement. <laughs> a absolutely, I, I do. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Selectman Toriato, Selectman LeBlanc, Selectman Daniels, and it's unfortunate that Selectman Sad is not here. And also you, Madam Town Manager. The support that we receive from your body and the management of this town is second to none. And it's really refreshing to see that in light of what's going on. And we, we all see it every day. Some police departments aren't really supported um, the way that uh, I feel that our department is by um, the continual um, positive reinforcement that, that you give at every meeting. I hear it at every meeting. You're always uh, talking about the offices and uh, the great job that they do. And, and they hear it. it, it gets back to them and they truly appreciate it and it's a good, it's a good pick me up for them. And uh, I, I just have to say that I'm, I'm truly fortunate to lead such a group of talented individuals. And as Selectman Daniel said, there's a lot that goes into the training aspect of it for policing. And um, they have to be a jack of all trades. They, they have to have some knowledge of every single component that was read. They may not be experts in each area, but they have a good understanding and they know how to pass the baton, so to speak, if something rises above their level of training and we have people in place that can handle that. So we're, we're really fortunate and they've all risen to the challenges that we know are out there. And um, I'm really proud to lead this department. Uh, we, we, we have a great group, all 33 people from, you know, our administrative staff to the dispatches, to the offices and part-time offices. It's a great team. And uh, I think we put a great product on the street and um, we, we're continually getting 
positive responses from the citizens. As a matter of fact, today, uh, there's a local company who wrote us a very nice letter of support and um, decided to buy um, all the shift's pizzas and provided uh, wow. drinks and sodas. And so every single shift today um, is, is going to get um, um, a, a meal um, of appreciation uh, from this company. And um, it, it happens often, it happens weekly. And, um, and, and you know what, and, and we need it now, we, we really do. We, we need that type of support moving forward because uh, uh, you know, a lot of offices are, are just getting uh, depressed by watching the news and everything they see, they continually get hammered with the negativity. So um, fortunately for us, I think I've said it before in front of this board that uh, this town is an exception. I think we're different. I think the people truly appreciate all the public services here not only police, but fire, EMS. Um, I think everybody does a great job and we all act as, as a great team. So thank you for, that, for recognizing Police Week that's coming up um, um, during May 9th to the 15th. And what we're gonna do is in the fall, um, we're gonna uh, do a memorial service in front of the Heartland Memorial and recognize the officer's names who are on the mon monument. So when that happens, I will send a notice out to the board and you will be uh, more than welcome to attend that ceremony. And um, once again, thank you very much. I, we, we truly appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. No, I think it's the other way around, Chief. Uh, we need to thank you. You, I think you make our, you know, I'm just speaking for myself. I shouldn't say this as a board, just myself. I think you make my job easy, you and all the officers, because we got such a good group of dispatches, and clerical staff and our offices are top notch that, you know, when you have such a good group of people, and as far as I'm concerned, it makes my job as a board member so much easier. And, uh, you know, Selectman Triano said it uh, tonight and, I, and I've always said it, you know, and it's repetitive, but, <laughs> You're so good, you know, we really are so fortunate. Um, you know, I go to other towns and, and I see, you know, some of the people there and we're just so fortunate. We have a great, great force and thanks to you because it does start at the top, you know. Um, I think you have, since you've become chief, things have really scaled up on a higher notch and, um, so thank you to you and all your staff as far as I'm concerned. Well, you're welcome. And, 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 and it makes my job easier too because we have such competent individuals here. Everybody that hits the street goes out with good intent. Their intentions are good and they wanna make a difference. And we see that every day. And um, that's why we get the positive feedback from our community. So again, to the entire board, thank you again. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming to our meeting tonight also chief appreciate it have a great night you too all right so that leads us to our uh, selectman announcements if any of our selectmen have anything to say i don't have anything tonight great no one else i do have one thing i had a very very nice discussion with uh gene o'reilly and uh, it, through the efforts of our uh, town clerk, um, she contacted the Historical Association um, to discuss the Oxford cane. Now the Oxford cane is usually given out, I guess, uh, or in other communities also, for people that um, live in Oxford that are like the oldest person in the town or something like that. And um, ours have disappeared. We used to have a couple and we don't anymore. So that's why the town clerk went to the historical commission. And so um, Gene informed me that they have agreed to come up with the money for a new cane and I guess we're gonna make a nice display case. And she didn't want me to elaborate too much more because it's still in the works, but uh, I just thought it was something that the board should know and will be a integral part of that because it's uh, through us that 
the person that is selected to receive the the town uh, cane comes through us. So uh, it was a very nice conversation. It was nice to hear that, you know, the town clerk has stepped up like that and the historical commission is also. So just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. We'll probably be discussing that in future meetings once uh, we know more information. So uh, not seeing any other people saying anything, then I will call for a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'll call for a vote. Yes. 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 And I'll vote yes. Four and affirmative. One absent. Thank you so much for coming to this special meeting. Sorry we had to do this, but a lot going on, I guess, in town. So thank you. Have a good night. Thank you all.